Yesterday, the request for extradition to the United States of WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange was denied by a UK judge. This is fantastic news. Assange has been detained for almost two years in horrendous conditions in London's Belmarsh Prison, a place that the BBC has likened to Guantanamo Bay. He's been held there while the UK courts decide how to respond to a US extradition request, which would put Assange on trial in America for basically being an investigative journalist. The indictment from the DOJ against Assange, which I'll go into in a moment, is one of the single biggest threats to freedom of the press in the last decade. But the judge didn't deny the extradition request based on freedom of the press. It was based on Assange's mental condition. The judge said, I find that the mental condition of Mr. Assange is such that it would be oppressive to extradite him to the United States of America. The request was denied because Assange is at risk of attempting suicide, and the US doesn't have a good track record with how they treated Chelsea Manning, the whistleblower responsible for leaking the documents that Assange published. Manning's sentence was commuted by Obama, but despite that, she was then re-arrested for refusing to testify against Assange. She was held in prison for a year and she eventually attempted suicide, only after which she was released. Kevin Gostola, a journalist at the extradition hearing, says that it was this cruelty that cost the US their request. While the judge's decision is great, it was made for the wrong reasons. The fact that Assange will be put on trial for activities that are not only hallmarks of investigative journalism, but necessary for the profession, is a terrifying prospect. And yet, the judge sided with the US government in all aspects of the case that undermines these press freedoms. This shouldn't be a surprise though, because the UK doesn't have any meaningful protections for freedom of speech or the press. But the judge's ruling means that any journalist reporting on government secrets who doesn't have mental health issues should be terrified. So what exactly is the US government charging Assange with? Well, in 2010, in conjunction with the world's largest newspapers, WikiLeaks published the Iraq and Afghanistan war logs and US diplomatic cables. They exposed systemic corruption and deceit by governments all over the world, particularly the US. For these publications, WikiLeaks was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize for promoting world peace by holding governments accountable for their actions. So it was a pretty big deal. The US and British governments were not happy about it though. As Snowden said, It was about um, reputational harm, right? It, the government had egg on its face and it retaliates as a result of this. Chelsea Manning, the whistleblower who leaked the documents, was arrested under the Espionage Act. But the government also went after WikiLeaks itself, which was just one of the media organizations that published the leaked documents. And publishing documents to hold the government accountable, just as the New York Times did with the Pentagon Papers or The Guardian did with the Snowden revelations, is a core responsibility of journalists. Pulitzer Prize winning journalists Glenn Greenwald calls the independent press the fourth branch of government that helps provide checks and balances. And yet the government went after the press. They launched a criminal investigation into WikiLeaks. And then Sweden issued an international arrest warrant for Assange over allegations of sexual assault. Assange claims that the allegations were a pretext for him to be extradited from Sweden to the United States and imprisoned for the WikiLeaks publishing. It's not clear whether the assault accusations were true because they never went to trial and Swedish prosecutors eventually dropped their investigation saying that their evidence had weakened over time. Meanwhile, Assange took refuge in the Embassy of Ecuador in London, which means he technically broke bail, and he was granted asylum by Ecuador on the grounds of political persecution. He lived at the embassy for seven years. But after the Ecuadorian regime changed and President Lenin Moreno came into power and changed up their foreign policy, the asylum was revoked and Assange arrested. I'm sure the change of heart had nothing to do with the $4 billion IMF loan that Ecuador was given at the time. In April 2019, Assange was dragged from the embassy and found guilty of skipping bail seven years earlier when he sought asylum. It was a minor offence and he was given the maximum possible sentence, 50 weeks. 
When that time was up and he was free to go, facing no more charges, the US unveiled an indictment against him that would keep him in prison. The indictment is all about the 2010 leak, and it is shocking how transparently they go after core tenets of journalism. Now, everyone seems to think that Assange is being indicted for helping hack government computers to retrieve secret information. This is a complete misrepresentation of the facts, caused by a press release that the DOJ issued about the indictment that included the term hacking in the headline. It turns out that the actual indictment doesn't contain any allegation of hacking in order to obtain documents. Instead, the charges are all about corresponding with the whistleblower and helping them to protect their identity. Basically, the computer that Manning used to retrieve documents had multiple user accounts. Manning could already access all the files she wanted to leak from her own user account. But in order to help her obscure her identity, Assange tried and failed to help her change this username so that the leak wouldn't be directly identifiable to her. The indictment says that this would have made it more difficult for investigators to identify Manning as the source of the disclosures of classified information. This portrays the act of protecting a source's identity, a duty ethically expected of investigative journalists, as a criminal activity. The indictment is filled with condemnation of such actions at the core of investigative journalism. It almost seems that the government is trying to criminalize journalism itself so that they can never be held accountable again. Here are some translations of the indictment. It was part of the conspiracy that Assange and Manning used a special folder on the cloud dropbox of WikiLeaks to transmit classified records, i.e. A journalist received files from a source via the internet. It was part of the conspiracy that Assange and Manning used the Jabba online chat service to collaborate, i.e. a journalist talked with their source via encrypted chat. It was part of the conspiracy that Assange and Manning took measures to conceal Manning as the source of the disclosure, including by removing usernames and deleting chat logs, i.e. A journalist protected their source. And one of my favourite parts, Assange actively encouraged Manning to provide more information. As Greenwald says, it would be a breach of one's journalistic duties not to ask vital sources if they could provide even more information so as to allow more complete reporting. This indictment criminalises the crux of investigative journalism. Greenwald continues, the Obama DOJ tried for years to find evidence to justify a claim that Assange did more than act as a journalist, but found nothing to justify that accusation. It concluded that it could not and should not prosecute Assange because indicting him would pose serious threats to press freedom. And because there's no way to distinguish what WikiLeaks did from what the New York Times or The Guardian or numerous media outlets around the world routinely do, namely, work with sources to publish classified documents. But despite this reasoning, the Trump DOJ went ahead and indicted him anyway. In 2017, Pompeo, then CIA chief, said, we can no longer allow Assange and his colleagues the latitude to use free speech values against us. But free speech isn't a right just for people that the government agrees with. The right to free speech and free press is meant to protect everyone, especially those that the government disagrees with. And yet, Assange has been placed behind bars indefinitely, silenced, as Greenwald puts it, by the very governments whose corruption and crimes he denounced and exposed. And although the judge's decision yesterday will stop Assange from being extradited immediately to the US, the US has 14 days to appeal the decision. And they intend to. Assange will remain behind bars in the meantime as the case slowly meanders through the courts and the decision could indeed all be overturned in the appeal. And even if Assange remains protected by the ruling and is eventually released, which would be so fantastic, the direction that society is headed in where journalistic activities are treated as criminal is a terrifying one. What happens to us when no dissent against government is allowed by the press anymore? I hope that the UK's decision remains firm. And I also hope that Trump pardons Assange to set a better precedent for freedom of the press, or that the Biden administration rescinds the charges. A society without freedom of the press is a dangerous and deadly one. Before you go, please subscribe to the channel and like the video and share it with others. Thank you so much for watching.